Prayer for the 2022 national and local elections. Let us pray that the forthcoming national and local elections may truly reflect the will of the Lord who guides our nation. For every petition, let us pray together, Deliver us, Lord. Deliver us, Lord. From coercion, intimidation, violence, and terrorism. Deliver us, Lord. From dishonesty, lies, and all distortion of truth. Deliver us, Lord. From bribery, graft, and all conspiracy for fraud. Deliver us, Lord. From gullibility to the deceptive and blindness of perspective. Deliver us, Lord. From threats, intimidation, and perverse language. Deliver us, Lord. Now let our response be, Hear us, Lord. Hear us, Lord. That conscience may always be our ultimate norm. Hear us, Lord. That the common good may always be our highest goal. Hear us, Lord. That human dignity may be respected all the time. Hear us, Lord. That the poor and the weak may always have the priority. Hear us, Lord. That care for creation may never be ignored. Hear us, Lord. That solidarity may guide the path of peace and development. Hear us, Lord. That genuine fear of God and love of neighbors may guide those who seek public office. Hear us, Lord. Let us pray. Shepherd of souls and Savior of the nations, politics is your gift to us, a call to serve others and grow in holiness. Guide our politics as you guide our lives. May our political engagement for voters and candidates bring glory to your loving name and help us grow in holiness forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, we continue to celebrate with great joy the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And as we celebrate this Eucharist, let us open ourselves to the new and glorious life that Jesus offers us. Let us now be sorry for our many sins. Let us ask God's forgiveness. Let us entrust ourselves to God's merciful love. Lord Jesus, you raised the dead to life in the Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who gladden us year by year with the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection, graciously grant that by celebrating these present festivities, we may merit through them to reach eternal joys. 
through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter and John were going up to the temple area for the three o'clock hour of prayer. And a man crippled from birth was carried and placed at the gate of the temple called the Beautiful Gate every day to beg for alms from the people who entered the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked for alms. But Peter looked intently at him, as did John, and said, Look at us. He paid attention to them, expecting to receive something from them. Peter said, I have neither silver nor gold, but what I do have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, rise and walk. Then Peter took him by the right hand and raised him up, and immediately his feet and ankles grew strong. He leaped up, stood, and walked around, and went into the temple with them, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the one who used to sit begging at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with amazement and astonishment at what had happened to him. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, invoke his name. Make known among the nations his deeds. Rejoice, Sing. O hearts that seek the Lord. Glory in his holy name. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Look to the Lord in his strength. Seek to serve him constantly. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. You descendants of Abraham, his servants, sons of Jacob, his chosen ones. He, the Lord, is our God. Throughout the earth, his judgments prevail. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. He remembers forever his covenant which he made binding for a thousand generations, which he entered into with Abraham and by his oath to Isaac. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Please stand. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory <clears throat> to you, O Lord. That very day, the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village 
seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus. And they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them. But their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, What are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped looking downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, said to him in reply, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place there in these days? And he replied to them, What sort of things? They said to him, The things that, ha that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people. How our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. But some of those, then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described, but him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are! How slow of heart to believe all that the prophets spoke! Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther. But they urged him, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered together the eleven and those with them who were saying, The Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, our Gospel on this Wednesday within the octave of Easter is about the beautiful story of the two disciples who were traveling from Jerusalem to Emmaus the evening of the day of the resurrection. We do not really know the reason why they were going to Emmaus. They knew that news about the resurrection 
is already spreading among the disciples of Jesus. Sinabi nila mismo na may mga kababaihan sa kanilang grupo na nagpunta nung umagang yon sa libingan ni Jesus at hindi nila siya natagpuan. And as they were traveling, as they were walking, Jesus, whom they did not recognize, walked with them. And Jesus did not only walk with them, Jesus asked them, What are you talking about? Ano ba ang pinag-uusapan ninyo? And they began to explain to Jesus, they began to tell Jesus about the story of Jesus, about what happened to Jesus, how he was sentenced to death, how he was crucified and died on the cross. And after listening to them at length, according to our gospel, Jesus explained to them all the scriptures which referred to him. Jesus patiently opened their minds to the truth about himself. Jesus enlightened them so that they may be able to understand the resurrection. Buong tiyaga na tinuruan sila ni Jesus. Buong tiyaga na itinama ni Jesus ang kanilang maling pag-iisip at maling paniniwala. Buong tiyagang nilinaw ni Jesus sa kanila ang mga sinasabi ng kasulatan tungkol sa anak ng tao. Jesus took time to correct the wrong understanding and the wrong impressions of these two disciples about the Son of God. In our first reading today, Paul and John healed a paralyzed man. Now just imagine the kind of life this man was living. He was paralyzed. And all his life, everything seems to be wrong. But by the power of the name of Jesus, and by the merits of Jesus' resurrection, the man was healed. Peter said to him, We do not have gold, we do not have silver to give you. But what we have, we give you. In the name of Jesus, rise and walk. And by healing this man, Jesus, through Peter and John, corrected everything that was wrong in his life. Sa pagpapagaling sa taong ito, yung kanyang buong buhay na parang mali, parang nasa maling direksyon, parang walang tama, ay naging tama at naiayos. He was given a new life and a new path to live. My dear brothers and sisters, that is one meaning of the resurrection of Jesus. Jesus rose again from the dead in order to correct everything that is wrong in our life. Muling nabuhay si Jesus upang itama ang maraming pagkakamali sa ating buhay. Muling nabuhay si Jesus para ituwid ang maraming baluktot sa ating buhay 
nadulot ng kasamaan, kasalanan, at kamatayan. And every time we patiently correct each other, every time we enlighten each other, every time we help each other understand the truth, we fulfill the mission of the resurrection. Kung papaanong itinuwid ni Jesus ang lahat ng pagkakamali sa kasaysayan nating mga tao sa kanyang muling pagkabuhay, kapag matyaga nating tinuturuan ang bawat isa sa katotohanan, kapag matyaga nating nililiwanagan ang isip ng mga naguguluhan, kapag matyaga nating ginagabayan ang mga naliligaw ng landas, kapag matyaga nating itinutuwid ang mga baluktot na paniniwala at prinsipyo ng ating kapwa, isinasabuhay natin ang muling pagkabuhay ni Jesus. That is the mission of the resurrection. Kaya sana ipagpatuloy natin ang misyong ito sa bawat isa. Hindi madali ang magturo at lalo na sa panahon ngayon, napakahirap magtuwid ng mga maling paniniwala. Kahit na po kaming mga pari sa aming pag-uusap at pagkukwentuhan, sarili na naming mga magulang, mga tita, mga tito, mga pinsan, hirap na hirap din kaming ituwid, hirap na hirap din kaming liwanagan ang kanilang isip. Napakahirap, pero tularan natin si Jesus na buong pagpapasensya na lumakad kasama ng dalawang alagad, buong pagpapasensya na nagturo sa kanila, binukas ang kanilang isip sa katotohanan upang maunawaan nila kung ano ang misteryo ng muling pagkabuhay. My dear brothers and sisters, let us patiently walk with our brothers and sisters. Listen to them, but also teach them, enlighten them, and help them under understand because that is the mission of the resurrection. For to enlighten and to correct is to love. And to love is life. To love is to experience the resurrection. Please stand. Recalling how the disciples on the road to Emmaus recognized Jesus in the breaking of the bread, we pray to God the Father for a deeper appreciation of the risen Christ as our spiritual food for the journey through life. For every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Pope and the bishops may effectively proclaim the message of hope by their holy lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That government leaders may bring hope and light to our people by their dedication to public service. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may understand why Christ had to suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are sick, especially those afflicted with COVID-19, and for those who care for them. May the vaccines and medicines, as well as our concern for each other, help end this pandemic. Let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. That the dead may enjoy the fullness of life in the company of the risen Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray in silence for our own intentions. We pray for the people who requested our prayers and for all the intentions offered in this Mass. Heavenly Father, grant us the deep faith necessary to recognize your Son in all situations we experience in life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, we pray, O Lord, the sacrifice which has redeemed the human race, and be pleased to accomplish in us salvation of mind and body, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. Amen. 
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with this Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make us, may he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you as their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we have the courage to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from ignorance, deception, lies, and all evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, 
who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the risen Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold Jesus, our risen Lord. Behold him, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Most Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Please stand. Let us pray. We pray, O Lord, that the reverent reception of the sacrament of your Son may cleanse us from our old ways and transform us into a new creation through Christ our Lord. Amen. We invite you to our weekly Wednesday evening healing rosary for the world. And the praying of the rosary this evening will be hosted by the community of the Resurrection of the Lord Parish in Paltok, Quezon City. Let us, as we continue to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus, join this parish community 
in praying the Holy Rosary to pray for our country and for the whole world. This will be at 9 o'clock tonight in our, on, our, on our Facebook page. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of His only begotten Son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by His blessings now and forever. Amen. May He, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance now and forever. Amen. And may you have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith by living a right, in, a, in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven forever and ever. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in the peace of the risen Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Yeah.